Studio Wildcard just revealed their new game, Atlas, an open world pirate survival game based around mythical creatures and massive servers capable of holding 40,000 players in one session. We're going to sit down and take a look at their official reveal trailer and then I'm going to move into their leaked gameplay trailer as well from many many months ago as I know some of you may not have seen that and we'll get a better look and a different side of what Atlas is striving to be. I've also got some pretty interesting news that fell into my lap about this game that other content creators may or may not have covered so stick around for that as well. Without any further waiting here is Atlas. And that right there is the game. Now I was a little bit skeptical about messing with Atlas at all to be honest with you because the last time Ark had a game derived from their own assets, you know, it wasn't really that good of a time. I don't know if you guys remember Dark and Light, but that game fired up in a flurry of madness and then overnight kind of just disappeared and dwindled down to nothing as you can see. So. You know, it's it's not really standing up to its current sister game, Ark Survival Evolved. However, I'm happy to say that apparently, Dark and Light didn't have the same development team and didn't really have the same creative direction, whereas the directors of Ark Survival Evolved and some of their team from the original project will be working on Atlas. What we're going to do is in real time take a look at this trailer now and see if there's anything that we may have missed. And if I miss anything in this as well, you guys let me know in the comments section because I'm kind of interested to see what you have to say and if anything was missed. So, oh, right off the bat, I see the war drums from Ark right there, actually. That's kind of cool. I see horses, Randy's Black Be Beaks Pub or Beers Beaks. I think, that's a, I think that's a K. It's really blurry. Anyways, let's go see what's up. Oh, we got some people at the gallows. Oh, you poor guys. Yeah, nice little bird right there as well, which is kind of interesting. The ships are really nice. I feel like this is aiming to be what Sea of Thieves ultimately failed to be. On launch, at, le at least. You can see this guy right here as well. Funny enough, that used to be a Megalodon in the original gameplay trailer. I have no sweet clue what the hell that thing is. It might be Moby Dick or something for all I know. And then we got treasure maps, a fire elemental... I like the dual pistols too, that's kind of cool. I have a feeling the weapons are going to handle very similar to Ark as well, which kind of upsets me, but they're single shots as well, so it shouldn't have too much impact. I like these cannons right here, look at those, damn, those are super nice. This is actually a scene that made it from the original trailer, which is kind of funny. And... Ship's going down, we got a fish, we got another fish, we got this guy scuba diving with his tie up, that's actually kind of cool, and this giant monstrous creature which we have no idea what it is. I'm assuming that's an endgame boss to some degree. And a nice dragon as well, which I like that. And that is Atlas. I didn't really see too much that I might have missed, so hopefully uh, that holds true. Now here is the official statement from Studio Wildcard posted two hours ago. Ahoy survivors, Jeremy and Jesse here, the executives of Wildcard by the way, these guys are pretty important. You might have noticed the announcement today of a new MMO called Atlas, developed by a sister team of Studio Wildcard named Grapeshot Games. Jesse and Jeremy together are now leading the development of Atlas at Grapeshot, while continuing to creatively supervise the direction of ARC. Grapeshot itself is comprised of some original 
ARC team members, as well as many new hires, and operates as a separate, dedicated dev team. The wildcard team, meanwhile, has grown, developing ARC and Extinction over the past year. Led by lead programmer Chiss Will, blah, 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 that word right there, and senior product or producer Colin Tenry. Tenary. I think that's how you actually say that. And have been doing an excellent job bringing fresh ideas and quality of life improvements to the game. As we work together with Chris and Colin and the rest of the team, Wildcard will continue to support and expand ARC over the years to bring new features, fixes, and expansions into the game. Grapeshot, meanwhile, will grow in a direction orientated around the operation of the persistent MMO service that Atlas is. While both games will share technology and infrastructure improvements to comp and complements uh, whatever that, basically. And see, I'm, I'm eating my tongue right now because they actually just said something. I don't know if they meant to say that, but... Um, continuing to expand ARC over the years to come. This is a brand new post by an executive at Wildcard, to my understanding, and expanding ARC to the... ARC isn't over. I called it. Yes, there we go. Yeah, ARC is still going to be getting more stuff. Clearly, an inadvertent, I guess, teaser that ARC is still on the forefront for them, and they'll be working on it. But now they want to branch out with the second game, and they want to bring Atlas to the world and hopefully have a second game they can branch off of and start working on and not just be known as the company that made ARC, but rather the company that made many different games. That's a really smart business move on their end, and if Atlas kicks off correctly and it has the quality and the product that we want, well, I think we're going to be in for a pleasant treat. I don't expect Atlas to become more popular than Ark Survival Evolved ever was. Even at the peak of Atlas, I don't believe that's gonna happen because Ark really, it pivoted off of a niche. I mean, dinosaurs are that niche, obviously. I don't know if there are as many people that wanna be pirates. Maybe if they try to go the Pirates of the Caribbean route, like they did with the Jurassic Park route, they might have a chance. There is some miscellaneous information from the creators of Ark Survival Evolved Comes Atlas, a massive first and third person fantasy pirate adventure. Atlas will host up to 40,000 players exploring the same globe simultaneously. That is crazy. But we're going to move off of this. Funny enough, I found this PC Gamer article, and these guys actually got their hands on a copy of this new pirate MMO with some interesting statements to make about it. It's going to be releasing on December 13th for $30. Most likely, I will be giving away game keys here, so leave your Steam name down below, and I'll mix them in with other videos in the future and pick some random people to win the game. I'll probably be getting a lot of CD keys as well, knowing uh, Wildcard and their habits of giving me... <laughs> crazy amounts of CD keys, basically. The Atlas at its simplest, a pirate-themed successor to Ark, stretches over a massive swath of ocean home to hundreds of islands. Those ambitions far exceed anything Ark tried to achieve. For one, it's truly an MMO where thousands of players can exist in one space together. And I mean together, in the EVE online sense of the world where everyone plays on one server, with some small grip, that it, whatever, uh, Atlas will only have one PvP and one PvE server for each major region, so players won't arbitrarily segregate across hundreds of identical servers as in World of Warcraft. Wow, that was a freaking, that was a tongue twister, holy crap. According to this, there is AI crew, which kind of, it's kind of interesting. It's a system that builds off of Ark's dinosaur management feature to give you the same degree of control over your AI crew and the various stats. From the helm or lieutenants, I can command my crew to fire, repel invaders, and more. This theoretically makes Atlas more approachable to players who prefer to go it alone, but everyone can benefit from having a few AI squad mates on their ship. That is super, super interesting, having AI with you right there and then makes a game less lonely. Let's take a lesson from Fallout 76. Always include some interactable AI or humans on a game, uh, in a game, so we don't get lonely and sad. While you can still build bases on land, much like you would in Ark, Atlas's ships are just as customizable. At launch, there will be five size templates to choose, from ranging, ranging from pitiful rafts all the way up to enormous galleons. Each template provides the base structure to help the ship, but players are free to customize parts of it however they please. That's kind of interesting. I like the idea of being able to dynamically edit a ship and choose a majority of the ships that are going to be in the game. That's actually kind of interesting. 
Its entire world is more like 1,200 different ARC servers stitched together on a grid spanning several biomes that range from frozen Arctic waste to white sand Mediterranean beaches. Each grid contains a few individual handcrafted islands, and when you sail away from those to another, got, to another grid of different islands, you are also seamlessly transferred to a different server node. It's set up similarly to EVE Online's Galaxy of New Eden, only without hidden loading screens. Now, the interesting thing about this is I don't know how many of you know about EVE or how wars happen there. When it comes to EVE and very large PvP battles, and I'm talking thousands of players being in one area, the servers themselves slow to a crawl to avoid crashing, resulting in the worst video game lag of any game possible. And I suspect that same system will play a role here. I can't imagine it would be completely uncapped and you can have thousands of players in one area without any lag at all. And judging from ARC's coding and the way ARC handles even 100 players, I would suggest this is probably going to be a system and I think it would really hurt the game if this is a system. I don't know for sure. We won't know until the game launches. Though, if there are lots of players, you know, just expect when you click it's going to take about five minutes for your sword to register a swing and do anything to the player but the server may not crash and it turns out atlas can actually support 50,000 players across the map if they're all spread out they do have a solution here saying that they will cordon off areas and lock areas to players if there's too many in them and that should solve the issues however that will also be very frustrating for people trying to join the battle Another thing about the end game and what happens with this, apparently you will be sailing through the entire map to collect nine artifacts. And then Jeremy speaks about a main quest that involves traveling the entire scope of the world to collect nine artifacts and bring them to the center of the map where players can fight an enormous sea demon abroad their, aboard their ship. Just don't expect to roll into villages and see dozens of golden check marks adorning their heads of his residence. Quote, we're not going to beat Blizzard in terms of making content, unquote. Stiglitz says, quote, we're not the kings of making content, and I'd rather focus on our capabilities on building systems, both gameplay systems and systems for players to own the world themselves, unquote. Kind of interesting how they acknowledge Blizzard and their system on questing. They go on to say that the price will increase from $30 to $60 when it leaves early access, and as for the performance, Stiglitz contends that at launch, Atlas will run better than Ark does now, after all of its iterations and TLCs and quality of life improvements. And that's in part to the fact that they'll be rendering mostly ocean and then, you know, some islands scattered out through this massive, massive map. However, this is shaping to be a massive, massive game. Being able to host up to 50,000 players on one server is absolutely crazy. I don't know of many games that can do this. I've been looking into the back end as well for Atlas. I can confirm they have ongoing development happening. I don't know who Rob the Vanquisher is or why this is a branch. I have zero idea. And basically these things right here are the branches that you would get to go into the game. What I mean by that is if I go to my games and I go to the aisle, for instance, I go to properties, I bring this over. Well, they have branches under betas. You'd enter a code, check code, and then you get access to a brand new branch. A new branch would pop up here. They click on it. That's how they load it through Steam. And that's basically what all of these are. They're, they're individual branches. And it seems like up to 17 hours ago, they have a test branch that's been edited and worked on. And the code has been updated. And then we see uh, the trailer team branch right here from two days ago. So this is the branch that they use to create the gameplay trailer. And that's actually pretty recent of an update to have for their trailer as well. So I assume they fired the trailer together in one day or so, or a couple days, or maybe even a week, and updated the, tra or the trailer branch as bugs ar arose. That is everything we know on Atlas right now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section about what you think about Atlas. Do you think this will be the spiritual successor to Ark or not? And what do you think is going to happen from here? To end the video off, I'm going to play the leaked, previously unreleased version of their trailer and what we had seen initially. Keep in mind, this was over four months ago. With this four month old trailer, we actually had very, a lot of, there was a lot of downgrades basically, and it's not what the game looks like right now in the current trailer. They use the Megalodon model for the shark that pops up. A lot of scenes are different, but there are some cool things that people overlooked and we didn't get to see in the final trailer, such as skeleton ships and I guess possessed ships as well. So let's move into that and then I guess I'm just gonna roll the outro card because there's not much more to say.